All right, this is the Save the Library Oral History Project for Local History. We're happy to have with us this morning Elizabeth Whitehouse uh, to interview regarding her memories and, um, and her thoughts on, on her life here in Sable. So why don't we again welcome uh, Elizabeth. Well, thank you. All right. What is your, what is your full name, if you could state that for Elizabeth us? Catlin Whitehouse. Okay, thank you. Full name. <laughs> when and where were you born? Brooklyn. But we had two houses, along with a lot of other people in Sable at the time. They would winter in the city because the Long Island Railroad was not that reliable in the winter. And the men didn't want to commute. The women didn't work at the time, but the men didn't wish to commute. But we all loved the summer out here. So Sable, for a time, was made up of a lot of Brooklyn people who spent, actually, from May through September out here in Sable. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. But along came, the, I have to add this, along came the Depression. <laughs> we, we all couldn't afford, you see, our, both houses. Mm -hmm. So mo most of us moved back here because we loved the town of Sable. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, you quickly find where your priorities are, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Were you born at home in a hospital or elsewhere? In a hospital. Okay. In Brooklyn there. In Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the, do you know the name of the hospital? I sure do. It was Brooklyn Hospital. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it was in downtown Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I think it's still going. All right. Great. Great. Uh, what are your family's origins? Oh, well, my father's family goes back to the 1600s. Uh, two Catlin brothers came over on one of the early ships. One went to Virginia and one went to Connecticut. And back in Connecticut, in Litchfield, Connecticut, there's still a Catlin homestead. Really? But they uh, scattered throughout, of course, and so that was the origin of the family. Mm -hmm. And did you mention, did they come from England then, I guess? They came from England. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, my husband and I tried to figure out where in London. We knew it was from London. Okay. And the only thing we could figure out was there was a cat one. Running, running away from the bakery store where the, the a fire of London started. Oh, wow. So we were wondering if he was being a good citizen, starting the fire to drive out the rats. Right, right. Uh, and therefore better escape to this country. <laughs> but I think that's just a story. <laughs> All right, any, uh, any astronomers in your line there? I don't believe they were, but really? they were <clears throat> a lot of, uh, say, they always loved sailing. Yeah. And of okay. course, se celestial navigation had to be known. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that was the astronomy branch. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Uh, let's see. Do you know, uh, do you know what their trades were by any chance of any of them? Well, the, when I traced the family, mm. They, um, first day I got them up to the uh, Revolutionary War, they were in that. Wow. And then they became, most of them became, and I mean most of them, but the brothers became lawyers. And they went to law school, there was a famous law firm in Litchfield, I guess it was a law school, it was run differently okay. than today, and I know they went there. And I know my grandfather was a lawyer mm -hmm. in Brooklyn, and, uh, well, you know Chris Bonkin. Yes. Well, his brother has a law firm now in Brooklyn. Oh, wow. And when he was renovating his office in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. he found my grandfather's law degree, which had slipped behind the... Um, mantelpiece that they had in the old office building in Brooklyn. Unbelievable. So I, I got that. 
Oh, Isn't that's that wonderful. That is wonderful. Yeah. What a great piece of memorabilia to have. That is just yes. terrific. Absolutely. You have to have that framed in your home someplace. Oh, I, that's just wonderful. Yeah, I think my, one of my sons has uh -huh. it at this point. Uh, great. Wow, that is interesting. Uh, so you married into the White House family. Yes. And when was that? My, uh, 1944, okay. the middle of World War II. Oh, wow. Yes. Wow. Okay. But go ahead. Yes, I, I married in the middle of World War II, and the wedding was set for June. But my husband to be was a Navy pilot. Oh my! And he just got his Navy wings, and I just got my diploma from NYU. I went to undergraduate school in NYU. We had it all planned for June, but guess what? My husband got the measles. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? Oh, oh, no. Had to go in a Navy hospital where they put him. So we had to postpone the wedding till July. Oh. All because of a case of the measles. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, goodness. So, it looks like... Um, you're, ori you're originally from Brooklyn then. When, when did you arrive, when did you arrive here in Salem? In that same year, that same, 1922. Okay. Mm -hmm. 1922 you arrived here? Yes. Okay. Well, I was born in June. Right, right. And I guess the family postponed came out yeah. right after. Yeah, okay, great. Um, what did your parents do for a living? My father, of all things, was a stockbroker, Wall Street. Really? Oh which my. Which nowadays one should hide. <laughs> <laughs> but he was an honest stockbroker. Right, ab right, absolutely, absolutely. That must have been a, a really tough time then for oh, him. Oh, it, it was. Oh my. He didn't, for 10 years, yes, he ahead. didn't make a nickel. He oh went my. to the office every day, but they didn't earn anything. And then, of course, things changed, but along came World War II. Right. So all during right. the Depression, and we would still come out here because we kept this Sable address as a permanent address. Yes. And we loved Sable. It was a nice town to live in. And our friends, most of our friends were out here, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was depression for everybody, so everybody yeah. cut down. What was that like? What was that like living at well, that you point? Know, what did you I do? Well, you know, I have a very odd impression as a youngster. Mm. I remember uh, um, that the store windows, instead of being nice and clean and sharp, were sort of grayish. They didn't have the money to have the windows cleaned. Unbelievable. Now, isn't that an odd memory? But that was my impression. You walk down to town and everything was sort of dull. Yeah. There weren't the lights at Christmas. Mm. There was just a few. Mm -hmm. uh, and the type of decoration was... Um, seems to me many of the stores and people had a red cellophane wreath with a single candle in the middle and that was a decoration yeah. seriously yeah. no other brilliant decorations if you were lucky your family did have a Christmas tree and lights but lights that went off if one bulb blew the whole, the whole chain of lights blew <laughs> <laughs> so that's my impression so did you have a Christmas tree Yes, my family did oh, have a good. Christmas tree. Good, good. So descriptive. That is that is such a great memory to have. Uh, it's just so descriptive and telling of the time. Yes, it you was. Know, uh, of, uh, much, but you know, everybody was in the same boat. Yes. It's sort of different from the recession of today. Okay. It was a deep depression where everybody was down. Mm. Mm hmm and I think um, it made it possible for everybody to uh, feel better about themselves. Mm. You know, yeah. it wasn't uh, it wasn't as depressing for the individual 
as it is today for right. the individual be, to be without a job because right. everybody was having a struggle. Right, right, right. Wow, that is, that's really, um, it's telling, it's descriptive. Mm -hmm. uh, that's impressive, that's impressive. Thank you. Um, so we, we got off a little bit on that subject. Can you, can you tell us um, what Sable was like back then? We, we talked about uh, what it was like you know, during the Depression and the, the decorations and things. And um, I hear you mention a lot as we talk about how lovely the town was. We do know it was, mm -hmm. and it still is. Yes, I In agree. In fact, Sable as a town, I believe, mm -hmm. has changed less as an atmosphere of the town ah. than any uh, around. As for what I mean by that is, you drive into Nassau yes. County, everything seems to be what I would describe as a sprawl. Yes. Everything runs into one town, you can hardly tell from the next. Yes, good point. We've been most fortunate here in Sable. Sable has remained a town, mm. and a town that the people seem to be pleased with, proud yeah. of. Yeah. And uh, I really, uh, and the local school system, mm -hmm. people have always supported, mm -hmm. and uh, through good times and bad. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, I, I, that's speaking generally. Right. And it still seems to be, now there are the differences, of course, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I can even faintly remember when the old firehouse with a big steeple was on Main Street. Yes. Before they built the one on Lincoln Avenue right. today. Mm -hmm. And I remember the big red bell, which they still have, was parked outside the yeah. firehouse, <laughs> things like that. And then not too far from the firehouse was um, Friedberg's uh, house. Their store sold uh, farm products for horses and cows because there were a lot of animal places. Now, animal places, there was the milk farm on Main Street okay. on West Sable. Okay. Everybody kept chickens in a chicken coop in their backyard. And there was a horse farm, beautiful horse farm, up just north of Main Street, um, up where the Indian Head section is. Near there was a horse farm. So Friedberg Supply House, I always remember that because my father went to buy feed for the chickens. Yeah. We had 12 chickens, and he went there to buy the chicken food, whatever that was. <laughs> I had a pet chicken. Oh, did you? Okay, what was his name? <laughs> his name was not very original. It was a brown chicken named Henny Penny. <laughs> Great. I also had George Chicken, but he okay. wasn't quite as playful as Penny. <laughs> <laughs> now, what kind of games did you play with your chicken? Oh, Henny Penny yeah. used to follow me like a dog. Really? Because um, my father happened to look out the window and going down, we had a house on Gillette Avenue then, going down the street was a police dog, German Shepherd, with a chicken in its mouth. And the chicken was squawking away. Well, my father rushed out. I don't know why he was so brave. Caught the dog, rescued the chicken. Henny Penny, that turned out to be Henny Penny. Who then oh my goodness, really? Followed <laughs> my husband, my father rather, home. So <laughs> Henny Penny got added to the, what they call white leghorn chickens. Okay that we originally had, uh -huh. headed by George Chicken. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. <laughs> that is a terrific story. Oh, my. So, all right, so you had Henny Penny. What, what else did you play as a child, and where did you play? Oh, I, I had um, friends next door. Mm -hmm. 
In fact, one summer, uh, John Wells, you know who does? Yes. He's been doing some history of Railroad Avenue. Yes, he has. Well, the year I was, the, it was the year that there was a, a fright over, um, uh, there was a lot of scarlet fever. Oh. And uh, infant town paralysis. Oh, my. That was the summer. I think I was eight or nine years old mm. that summer. And that summer, the people next door to the north of me mm. on Gillette Avenue, John Wells' family, and we weren't allowed, to, no children were allowed to gather together because of the spread of disease. Oh, my. And we were all bored to death, but you could sit on one side of your fence and the other child on the other side of his fence and play games over the fence. <laughs> but you weren't allowed to play together right. because of the spread of disease. Oh, my. And I know we had, my brother was very ill with that. He had scarlet fever. Oh. And in those days, they put a big yellow sign on your front door you know, sure. to control, try and control it. And uh, so that summer was the summer I got to know John Wells playing over the fence. <laughs> because nobody was allowed in or out. Oh my. Oh my. Yeah, that was in 19, oh, uh, let's see, it must have been, what was it, early 30s. I'll have to leave it at that. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. And uh, where the present golf course is. In West Salem? The, yes, the Bourne, it was the Bourne Estate. Yes. And their little girl, they wouldn't let anybody in or out of the estate. The little girl was my age. Right. And they wouldn't let anyone in or out of the estate. They were so afraid of infantile paralysis. Wow. Uh, but you know what? Of all the children I knew, she got infantile paralysis. No. Yes. Oh my god. I've forgotten the result because none of the children were supposed to gather in groups that yeah. summer. Oh my. And they had isolated her on that big estate. And she still got it. Still got it. So it was mm. a scary thing at the time. I bet. But other than that, we all had a, other than that one summer, we all had a fine time in Sable. Uh -huh. What did we play? Mostly we went to the beach in the summer. I was going to ask, did you swim? So go oh. ahead and tell, tell me about that. Well, as a child, we went to the clubhouse that was at the foot of Candy Avenue. Yeah, okay. And it was on the west side of Candy Avenue. And it's where the streets today I can best describe as Fairway East and Fairway West. Yes. Those streets were the middle of a nine-hole golf course. Yes. Well, while my father played golf with his friends, mm -hmm. the rest of us went to the beach club. And it was a beautiful clubhouse. Bathhouses, mm -hmm. they had a big reception room where they held many affairs in that uh, reception room. Uh, but again, the Depression got it. Okay. Yeah, so it finally closed, and uh, then we people went to other beach clubs like the Cedar Shore. Yes. Hotel ran a beach club. Yes. And the Shoreham mm -hmm. at the foot of Foster Avenue ran a beach club. Cedar Shore was the foot of Handsome Avenue. Most of everybody went to a beach club or the public beach. Mm -hmm. The public beach was formed by the Village Improvement Society. So their beaches were always crowded on the bay. The bay, nobody spoke about pollution in those days. I was going to ask you, what was it like? And, and yet the bay must have been polluted, but mm. it must have been the kind of pollution that was good for the shellfish industry right. because the clam, clamming and fishing, mm. all those uh, workmen did very well. Mm. And uh, so that was a big industry right off Sable, especially West Sable, the Blue Points. The Blue Points there. Company, that's right. Yes, a company mm. there. And uh, 
as I said, I, I'm not sure what, what happened, but after the 38 hurricane, mm. and it opened a new inlet, mm -hmm. and then of course there were more people too, so who knows, but from then on was the decline of the shellfish industry. Wow. From 38 on. From 38 on, yeah. that's really interesting. But up till 38, mm. it was very, uh, the men made a very good living on the mm -hmm. bay. Mm-hmm. In fact, as youngsters, uh, a couple of our, my parents' friends had boats, and we'd go over to Byron Island, and you could pick with your toes. You could wiggle them <laughs> in the wiggle them in the sand and find all the hard shell clams. So you had free clams Isn't all that summer. <laughs> And the, of course, the clamors didn't mind because uh, it, the, the clams on the shoreline, they didn't harvest those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just the people did with their toes. Right. <laughs> yeah. I always remember, grow, I, I grew up in Sable as well, so did you? I, remember, I remember going to the Sable Beach often. Did you? you? Know, growing up. You don't look old enough. But I, re <laughs> but I remember the water having always a dark brown tint to it. You know, was it, has it always been that way? No, but you know what turned it in those? It wasn't the brown tide at okay. that time. So what it was, was it? those duck farms in Mauritius. Really? Okay. Yes, and you the duck waste would filter down into the bay, mm -hmm. our part of the bay, I mm -hmm. should add. Yes, that was a lot. That was a problem, mm -hmm. but nobody seemed to get ill from it. Right, and it didn't just seem to disturb the the hard shell clam. I was going to say it didn't seem like it disturbed the ecosystem at all. No, right? it didn't. Very interesting. It is interesting, and I really don't know why. Yeah, but I know it was due to the duck farms huh. mainly. Huh. So when you went into the bay, could you see down to your feet? Say that again. When you went into the bay, could you see down to your feet if you looked it, down it to the water? It depends upon the wind. Okay. A north wind, you could add the bay would sort of clear the bay. Yeah. Southwest wind stirred it up. Really. So uh, it was there. The north wind, you had a nice clean bay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. That is great. Thank you. That you helped me relive some of my childhood. So I. Oh uh, yeah. Now, it brings back a lot did, of fun when did, you, did you live in Sable? I lived on Loop Drive. So Did you? Yes. Uh, now, what school, elementary school, did you go to? Oh, uh, no, I went to Sunrise Drive. Yes, and, well, uh, that was years later. Yes. When I was a little girl, the only school was Old 88, which was right here. Where we are standing now, that's, that's right. right, that's right. So tell me now, so did you go to Old 88? No, I didn't. See, we went into the city house. Right, because you were from Brooklyn. School. Right. That's right, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. So I didn't, but I'll tell you why I know so much about it. Yes. Is uh, that the, uh, the summer people would rent their houses to the teachers in the winter. Aha! Uh -huh. And our house was rented in the winter to Walter Dickey's. Okay. And Walter Dickies was hired, I've forgotten why, but he was hot, helped to design the elementary school here on Green Avenue. Really? Right next door? The Green yeah, Avenue right elementary? next door to Old 88. Really? In fact, that, that didn't open till 39, but really? I think they started planning for it in 36, 1936. And that was a big deal mm -hmm. because it was the elementary school for all of Sable and West Sable. Wow. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And it, it, was, it, it was beautifully built. It is a pretty building. I, the, the lines on it are just so classic. I really and think that whoever designed it, yes. and I can't remember that, but I remember Walter Dickies was the principal and helped to design uh -huh. that building. And he rented our house on Gillette Avenue, you see. So uh, coming and going, uh, in fact, he was the one who said, uh, told me to go into, in for teaching huh. Huh. As later as I grew old. Really? Now tell me, so we've, we've talked about your house on Gillette Avenue. Is it, is it standing today? What oh, is yeah, it 127. Okay. Now, so 
Describe for me exactly where it is on Gillette Avenue. Is it close to where the uh, Gillette House is at this point, or is it further down towards it's the bay? Fur it's further down towards the bay. It okay. was the, um, what is that street, Edwards? Yes. All right, if from Edwards Street North, there was one, two, three, fourth house north uh -huh. from, um, Edwards. From Edwards. Yeah. And that's where you were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is. One twenty-seven. I remember the number. And you know what our telephone number was? You please go ahead. Sable two. Thornhill was one, and <laughs> mine was two. That's because my grandfather was with the telephone company, so. Wow. He got us that number. So all right. So how did you how did you dial another number then? So describe you, how you did that. Oh, you picked up the receiver. Yes. And you said, hello, Sally, who happened to be the operator. I want Sable, too, to get my house. That was it. And I had friends, and I memorized. One of the um, numbers was Sable 96. Okay. That was Mrs. Skelton's house. Mm -hmm. And then there was uh, my other friend was Nancy Palmer. Mm -hmm. And it was, of course, Elbow Palmer, who uh, built up that whole area south of Jones, mm -hmm. uh, but Nancy oh. was my friend, uh -huh. and uh, L. Walt Palmer was my, we got to know him well because uh, L. Walt Palmer, who owned and built up everything south of Jones, mm -hmm. uh, he went to kindergarten and all through school with my father. So they were very good friends, but they were always trying to outdo each other. <laughs> I don't know who won. <laughs> They're both gone. <laughs> but for example, Elwell owned that little peninsula in the middle of Greens Creek, huh. and all that swamp land I don't know if you want me to go into what happened to the flooding of the basements. If you want, I mean, go ahead, please. I so many topics I do know. Please, because, uh, you know, speaking of uh, the, the storm that just went through here last month, and yeah. uh, I still see basements that have hoses running out of them even today well, they that are see, draining. See what it is. Go the, ahead. Now, don't forget the stories of... Uh, that what happened is nev there's never one cause, okay. one single cause. Right. But let me say, I'll speak about contributing factors okay. for flooding basements. All right. In fact, I just gave a talk on that to Garden Club. Oh, did you? <laughs> entitled, Why Is Your Basement Flooded? <laughs> well, one, now as I said, there are many reasons. Yes. Of course, today, as you know, the warming and the melting of the glaciers. Right. Okay. But another contributing factor, when the original glacier came down to the middle of Long Island, yes. came as far as approximately where the expressway is, mm -hmm. when it began to melt, it formed many little rivers okay. draining towards the ocean. Mm -hmm. One we know of is Browns River and Sable. And then the other or western end of Sable is Greens Creek, mm -hmm. which is a river from the glacier. Mm -hmm. But what people don't know is that there are many other little rivers that drain through Sable. And so I drew a map for Garden Club on where those other rivers once flowed and showed them if you lived in this area, you have a wet basement, and you probably will, unless you can get it waterproofed or whatever they mm -hmm. do. But for example, if you drive along Elm Street, yes. Sable, which is the southernmost road that goes west to east. Good, right. Okay. If you go, uh, I can't remember the name of the road, but the Landcroft section, they call it, of Sable, 
ju it's um, not too far from the Good Sam nursing home. Okay. There was a, a river there that flowed, and even when I was a little girl, I remember the river and part of it. It ri ran, a, a, well, they covered it over, so Elm Street, but it ran over Elm Street down part of the, it would have been the western end of the golf course up to Main Street and you know where the home store is today? Yes. Well that river is just to the, uh, it's still there filtering in the sand. It's just to the uh, home store would have been just to the west of where the river flowed and, they, and further then up north and there were many <coughs> <coughs> streams like that and there were many tributaries of course small ones mm -hmm. to Browns River and there was another one uh, that of course ran by the golf course well naturally those uh, basements and the houses are between Fairway East and Fairway West yes they get a lot of wet basements mm -hmm because the river went by right by there right. too. And so that is one reason for wet basements, but of course the other is literally there is more water in the ocean with the melting glaciers, mm. therefore in the bay. Right, right. Plus another factor, which you might be interested in, mm. the uh, bulkheading. For example, you take it, uh, the uh, right by Greens Creek and right, of course, by uh, Browns River. Yeah. People have bulkheaded their property. Well, take for example Greens Creek. There was a big swamp. They don't call it swamps anymore. Wetlands. It's just south of uh, Jones Drive was all a marshland. You might remember that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the Boy Scouts would come down there to see what was going on as far as right. nursery for, mm -hmm. you know, the young for the, the sea life. Well, all that is bulkheaded and filled in, courtesy of Elwell Palmer. Uh -huh. uh, and therefore, there's nothing to absorb the storm that there used to be that the wetlands would absorb a lot of that water. So that's another cause of wet basements. Uh -huh. Plus it's hindered sea life in the bay. Mm -hmm. That was the, the, all those wetlands was, were the nurseries of much of the young sea life. Mm -hmm. So we made a big error bulkheading so much. Right. Even in Fire Island, the bay side, they've even bulkheaded that. I sure. just, I, it's sad. Yeah, yeah. But nobody has Mrs. Whitehouse. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just remarking too that, you know, you cannot, nature is persistent and you cannot play with it too much. <laughs> well, <you laughs> because it will insist yeah. on its way. <laughs> Um, did you work as a child? My first job was uh, town of Islip in the summer had a program for children where we used Old 88, uh -huh. the front yard basically because mm -hmm. that's where the grass was. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got my first job, I think I was just a volunteer though, I don't remember any money because uh -huh. it was depression. Sure. But we would play games and activities with the children in the front yard of old 88. And how old were you when you had that job? Well, about 14 or really? so. Really? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm sure I wasn't paid anything. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They had a lady in charge and... All right. That's great. That's great. Uh, let's see. All right. Have you um, have you been to Europe or the Pacific at all? Oh, I was very lucky. Once we got our five children educated yes. from college, okay, 
didn't have any money before that. <laughs> but once we got them educated, my husband and I were lucky. We took, we were able to go um, to Europe. Yes, how nice. The Middle East. Oh, wow, that's uh, fascinating. China, mm. Philippines, only touched on South America. But in other words, we were most fortunate for those years. Absolutely. Yes. Wow. Yes. The, um, did you do any of that travel with Rotary or? I um, know, you know. Or was that all on was, your own? As you know, well, you know, you said you were in the, and when I was running the planetarium, let's face it, there aren't too many planetariums anywhere. No. And I guess I was the only female running a planetarium. Most of them were run by people uh, who were either Harvard professors or the equivalent. And they would, <laughs> they would snob me left and right. Well, we had a big conference in Switzerland. Oh, wow. I got a lot of traveling in because of that planetarium. They let me go to these conferences. And being the only female, they did recognize me, but snobbed me just a bit. Mm. Well, evidently, in Switzerland, these PhDs, astronomers, were showing off their, how they would run a planetarium and what they knew. And most of the time, the audience went to sleep. <laughs> or, or the or if they did it for children, the kids would act up. <laughs> well, finally came my turn. They did give me a turn. And I happened to notice the children are absolutely unruly. Oh. <laughs> because they, the, the astronomers were brilliant people. Sure. Probably knew twice as much as I did. Uh -huh. But I knew more how to handle the children. That's right. So I said, I will run a program. And I said, I've noticed that uh, most of your programs are for the older. Mm. And I said, so I'm going to illustrate and show you how to handle the younger children and hopefully interest them in astronomy. So I did, and I, of course, ran a couple of the programs. I ran right here in Sable. <laughs> and I knew how the children would react. I knew how to keep them peaceful. And uh, from then on, I got respect because I could handle the children. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I enjoyed that tremendously. Yeah, well, I remember, I remember your planetarium presentations. <laughs> and that w there were not enough of them because that was the highlight of oh, my elementary had... and middle school years. We just, I so enjoyed that. Well, and that's good. Well, you know, I, my philosophy in teaching in general, mm. whether it was the planetarium or before that earth science, we'll yes. say. Yes, right. I believed that it was worth the time mm. to interest the children yes. first. And then you'll be surprised how much more they will learn. How true. Taking the time to, oh, I suppose in a way it's, uh, it could almost be classified as entertainment but you're not supposed to say that. <laughs> but it was. Mm -hmm. If you interest that child, he or she learns so much better. That's so true. And in the planetarium, I, uh, if you remember, I always had stories that went with those stars. Yes, you did. Yeah. Yes, you did. Not just straight astronomy. I remember music. It was an entire multimedia presentation. Yeah. It was tremendous. It right. was it was enthralling. Well, I see I also had fun doing it. Mm. That made a difference too. Yeah, well, you could tell it came through. It yeah. came through. Well, Absolutely. Well, good. Thank you. I wish I was still doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how uh, how did you how did you meet your husband then? Oh, so he was the Navy I mean, pilot. You can't stop me talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> John uh, moved out to Sable. His parents both died at the uh, early part of the Depression. Okay. And the relatives couldn't afford to keep four children. Mm. Well, the Episcopal Church, Ch Church Charity Foundation is what it was called, 
had these two built these two houses opposite St. Anne's and Sable. Right. And one was the gir for girls' house, and one was for the boys' house, and it was for children, not to orphans, but children whose either the parents couldn't afford to keep them, mm. or mm. the child had no place else to go. Well, John and his brother, two brothers and sister, were children in the children's cottages. Amazing. And I, of course. Um, went to church in Brooklyn, but I wasn't going out here at first too often to St. Anne's. Mm -hmm. But my mother's good friend said to my mother, mm -hmm. Betty should go to church. So Betty got dragged to church. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went with uh -huh. Mrs. Mrs. Skelton was her name. She was a lovely lady. Mm. But anyhow, she brought me to church first. And I thought, oh. <laughs> and I went. Well, at the time, my mother was not, oh, that's another story. Forget that. Um, I looked, I sat down politely. I knew what to do because I did go to church in the city. Um, in came the crucifer. The, mm -hmm. yes. In those days, the boy mm -hmm. and his football friends mm -hmm. were part and led the choir into church. Yeah, they were church. part of the processional. And mm -hmm. I thought to myself, oh, this isn't too bad. <laughs> so he was the crucifer then yeah, in the processional? Yeah, he was the crucifer, right? Uh -huh. needless, needless to say, I got to be a better parishioner. <laughs> and then um, John got it. Um, my future husband got mm -hmm. a job with two, uh, with the uh, the parents of good friends of my parents, and he was uh, the companion for their two little boys. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a little brother the same age, so every Sunday night we had Sunday night supper with them. Huh. And, uh, of course, I was supposed to mind my little brother, mm -hmm. and John was supposed to still be taking care of these little boys. And this, this was later in my teenage years. Okay, I was going to ask and you how yeah, old you were. Yeah, well, 15 and 16, uh -huh. age group. It was the time of the World's 39 World's Fair. Okay. That was that summer, anyhow, where he had the job there, and I was supposed to behave and mind my little brother. Well, after having Sunday night supper together all summer, plus we'd go to the World's Fair, and John and I would have charge of the children so my parents, I guess, could go off. And uh, we had a very good time. <laughs> and, uh, so I dated him, began dating him then, from the time we were 15 and 16, and then, of course, time went on. Sure. Now, okay, so you, you met him between 15 and 16, and you dated, what, how old were you when you married him? I had just graduated from college. I was 21. Wow. Wow. So we did. We were polite about the whole thing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But also, due to my parents were strict, you see. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't have permitted uh, you get through school first. Yes. Yes. And uh, John got to get his Navy wings, too. Mm -hmm. So he got his Navy wings as a pilot, and I got my college diploma, and that was, then we married. So what is your, what's your undergrad degree in then, from uh, NYU? It was a science. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. It was not astronomy. I had to go back to school for that. Great. Great. That's amazing. What an amazing story. So, you told me a little bit about what courting was like with him. You spent a lot of time minding the children. Oh, we had a wonderful time. We bet. had a, do you know, Ben, uh, I tried to tell my children, mm. if you have a good time with somebody, if you're friends, mm. now that doesn't, of course, they probably didn't listen to me, <laughs> but it's, it's the basis of a good marriage. How if true. you have a you enjoy each other if you're true friends as well mm -hmm. and my husband and I had a good time in life 
wonderful. We really did. We enjoyed everything at the same level. Yes. And that's right. what's good. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. true companionship? Yes. Isn't that yes. true companionship? Of course, some of the young people laugh when you say, say that we were friends. <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> That is, that is great. That is great. Uh, how many children do you have? Five. Wonderful. What are their names? Jack, John, it's John Jr. Mm -hmm. Helen, Rob, Elizabeth Ann, mm -hmm. James, Rob, mm -hmm. and George Catlin. Mm -hmm. Those are the five children. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. And are any, uh, are any teachers as well? Nobody wants to teach mama really? to dominate. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone go into science? No, no. no really? No, no. Really? Okay. Yeah. Very different interests. Very different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully they were independent and brought them up to be. They're yeah, all good. nice people. Good. Them. Good. What, uh, so what piqued your interest in science then? What brought you to that? You were, you were always good at it or like what fascinated you about it? Oh, I, do, I, I don't really know. Mm -hmm. It's a gradual thing. Mm -hmm. We're always interested in it. Mm -hmm. As all through school I seem to have a tendency for the mad science. Uh -huh. And uh, rather than the language. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. In other words, oh, I got through everything, but sure. I, I did my best in math and science. Right. I guess it was that. Right. So you just had a natural leaning, uh, yeah. leaning there. We talked about your first job being uh, with the town of Islip. Yeah. Here on uh, on this property on uh, Old Eighty Eight. Yeah. Between. Um, any other jobs that you'd like to mention that you had between, let's say, between that time working for Town of Islip and then going to NYU? Yes, I went to New York University. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to go away to college. Okay. Uh, in fact, I was accepted at quite a few, luckily. Mm. But my father had lost too much money. It was the end of the, the depression. The depression. Mm. He and he said to me, he was very honest about it. He said. I don't have the money to send you away to school. Mm. You'll have to pick a, a school where you can commute. Well, we had the city house, luckily. Mm. So I just I went to New York University, which turned out to be a very good school. Excellent school. And uh, But it wasn't a way to school. But in a way, that was also good. You don't get wrapped up on too much social life. It's mm -hmm. It was really like going to business mm -hmm. in that sense. I yes. had a job to do that was to get that degree. Mm -hmm. There wasn't the social life like there would have been away in school. Sure. So it was good. So what was it like being a student then? Describe to me what it was like going to college. Now you were one of, we talked about you being one of the, the or, or maybe the only female astronomer at some of these conferences. Yes. Did you find the same dynamic while you were studying at NYU? Oh, yes. Okay, I, how was I, that? I had a wonderful time academically at mm. NYU. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it, but you know what? I had my undergraduate school days were at an all-girls school. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I went to NYU with 5,000 people in my class. Wow. And boys and girls. And mixed culturally. Oh, well, very interesting. this was very good. Mm -hmm. Because I had been isolated, really, in a small girl school. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, at NYU, the president had a meeting with a number of students where you had to say what was the biggest advantage of going to NYU. And I gave a talk how much I had learned, not just academically, but how much I had learned by associating with so many people of different cultures. Mm. And I got the award above everybody else because even in those days, 
the people seem to recognize that in America we better learn mm. to get along and work with Good. different cultures. Mm -hmm. And I saw that at NYU it was so surprising to me. Mm. So in that sense, NYU was probably the best thing I did. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because I learned to respect other people and their yeah. different cultures, which if I'd been at a, another private college, I probably wouldn't have gotten. Right. Now, did some of that exposure to those other cultures fuel your desire to visit some of those regions as you were older than with your husband? Oh, sure, for okay. both of us. Uh huh. Now, just a funny tale. Everybody Please. loves to travel. But John had promised me when he luckily came home safely from the war, yes. he said, someday we'll save our money, mm -hmm. we'll go on a cruise in the Pacific to where I had to fight on an aircraft carrier. Oh, wow. We'll go on a cruise ship with a martini. <laughs> well, we got to do that. Oh, that's wonderful. We found a cruise that just about covered where he had sailed on a, a he was on a, what they called a jeep carrier. Okay. So, uh, so we went on a luxury cruise liner, as compared to the uh, <laughs> navy to, ship. To a navy ship, absolutely. Oh yeah. my. Oh, oh my. boy. So now he, so he was a navy pilot. Did he fly then out in the Pacific there? Oh, he, he was in every. I, I'm so lucky to have gotten him back. Yeah. Every single war. Do you want another story? Go right ahead, please. A very please. funny one. Please, go right ahead. <laughs> um, years went on. He came home safely. Yes. Yes, he went bang, bang, shooting at the Japanese. Right. They shot at him, too. Oh, my. Okay. Wow. But he came home, mm. for which both of us were truly grateful. Mm. Um, years go on. We had the children, five children. Yeah. Our oldest son had a baby boy, mm -hmm. our grandson. So John the third is our grandson. John the third grows up and is going to be married. Okay, now don't forget I'm old enough to have married grandchildren. So John the third, we have to go to the all the receptions and everything, and we meet. The girl is Japanese. Uh -oh. Her name is Etsu, a lovely girl. And we meet her grandfather, John the Third's grandfather, my husband. Etsu's grandfather was a Japanese Navy pilot oh my in exactly the same battles in the air as my John. Have mercy. They shot at each other, so at the wedding, the big joke was, you two were lousy shots. <laughs> because here you are. Here you both are. Here you both are. And the grandchildren were married. Isn't that, Isn't amazing? that amazing? What a wonderful story. Yeah. What I a wonderful so, story. It really is. It, that is, on so many levels. Truly, yeah. truly, yeah. truly. Which should prove to people, what mm. do our wars do? Mm. Yeah. Kill off a gener many yeah. people, but do they really settle some? And Sue's a lovely girl. Mm. She comes from a lovely family. Mm. And of course, I think John's family is good. Oh, I think so. <laughs> but isn't that interesting? What a great story. That yeah. is that is just amazing. Yeah. How um how that could all come tying together, you know, so yeah. intimately. That is just amazing. Yeah. Never know what life will bring. No, you don't. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and sometimes it brings wonderful things like that. Mm. Wow. Um that's great. I know we talked about uh your house on Gillette Avenue, um any fun adventures to recall from friends and family? Unique adventures that you've had? I, I, I talk enough to <laughs> think of lots of them. Let me think. And yet, because I think most people are interested in Sable. 
Uh -huh. And of course, I remember Ellen Half, who was the librarian. Yes. When they converted from to the building on Collins. Yes. That originally was a big old wooden gray building. Mm. When I was a little girl, I went to the library. It was almost like going in somebody's house because mm -hmm. it was a big old wooden gray building. And Eleanor Half was a very fine librarian. Her house was only about five doors away from mine. Mm -hmm. It was right there on Edwards yep. and the corner of Collins. Mm -hmm. So she lived really just down the road from, um, from the original, yeah. what well, wasn't the original library. Right. The original, which I don't remember, was over a storefront, I yes. believe. Yeah. But that I don't remember. Right. I right. just remember the gray house. Mm -hmm. And Eleanor Half, who was a lovely lady mm -hmm. and a very active lady. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mrs. Okay. White. Yes, we appreciate it.